Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. So I recently posted a short about Diluc, quote unquote, getting a buff because of Xianyun. I asked if anybody was interested in watching a full length video about my thoughts on Xianyun and the reason for saying what I did in that shot, right? But as I expected, <laughs> I only got one comment. So shout out to ILLordGaming2053 for leaving a comment. I did end up making a full bit anyways, as you can see right now. But yes, I fully expect to get no more than three views and i expect two of those viewers to not watch it till the end so if you are the one viewer who will watch till the end i will really appreciate you i will let you know right so let's get into the topic first i will explain what her kid basically does okay you can read her actual descriptions but yes convoluted as always classic hoyo she's an animal catalyst her normal attack talent doesn't do anything special it's very normal Get it? Cause like, cause like, it's 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 normal attack and it's n never mind. Uh, her skill has two parts. First is jumping. You can jump three times. It's kind of like the Luke skill where you only have one skill and one charge of that skill, but you can use it three times, right? And then depending on how many times you jumped, you will perform a special plunge and do more damage. If you do one E and then plunge, you will do less damage. Two E plunge is more damage. And 3E plunge is the highest damage you can do. I don't really recommend going 3Es, it takes a lot of field time. But let's be honest, nobody's going to spend 5 seconds of their rotation doing 3E plunge for 1000 damage anyway. So yeah, I mean it's not 1000 damage, but you're not gonna be building her for damage. She has a lot of ER requirements. But anyways, let's not get into that. This is not a build video anyways. So, okay, so she generates 5 particles regardless if you do E plunge or E E E plunge, so why bother with the E E E plunge? And why am I saying E E plunge? I could have just said triple E plunge. But anyways, now let's move on to her burst. It does multiple things. When you activate it, you will get a pet, 8 lament stacks and a pretty sizable party wide heal. It's not actually called Lament Stacks by the way, it's some adaptive bullshit, I do not remember, so yes, Lament Stacks it is. Okay, so now what these stacks does is it basically lets your active character jump high and each time they plunge down and hit opponents, one Lament Stack is consumed. And the pet also does animal damage when you plunge down. Also, she will heal your entire party for about a fifth of the initial healing to my knowledge. At fixed intervals, it does not rely on plunge, so you can use her indeed if you are not plunging. Now let's see her passives. Her first passive gives you some crit rate depending upon the enemies you are hitting with your plunge. But the crit rate is only applicable to the plunge. Now this also includes the bonk, which is the collision plunge damage. So yes, I guess it's good, but it's not a lot of crit rate. It's just like 4% to 10%. But don't quote me on that. It beat us still up. It could be changed whenever, you know. And her second passive is the main one. Now this passive buffs your plunder shockwave damage. Now what is plunge shockwave damage? It means when you hit the ground. So not the bonk plunge, the low or high plunges that your character does. They get buffed by 180% of Xianyu's attack. Up to maximum 9000 damage but realistically you are never going to reach that cap. It's closer to like 4000 or 5000 additional damage for you. And this does scale with your damage percent and crit, so it's a very big buff. But, 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 there's a very big but here, and that's it's only single target. And it, it's only active when you have limit stack. Yeah, so basically, to put it simply, she burst, she heal, her pet do shit damage, and you ain't got reactions, and she buff your plunge based on her attack. That's it. That's literally it. That's all there is to it. Okay. Now to my thoughts on her and how I think she's going to affect Devuk and how she's going to fit in the game, right? So let's start off. She's great for Xiao, obviously, because you know you are free from Bennett's circle impact. And circle impact is always cringe. I hate it so much, especially because your plunge is stagger and is away. So you have to plunge from one side three times and they are getting outside from the other side of the circle, so you have to move on that side and then you have to plunge the, it's it's very great it's very cringe i hate it so much oh my god okay so yes it, she frees you from that circle impact Sha will now work better with furina because of her heals party white heals furina is a great sub dps as well so yeah Sha is getting an upgrade cool everybody knew that 
right? It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. She does not change his combos really at all. He can play without her. Nothing too interesting here. Let's look at the more fun stuff, right? That's what we've been waiting for. Batman! Oh no, wait, I mean Diluc. Okay, so here we go. As a dedicated Diluc main, I would like to put it out there that she's not a quote unquote buff. I mean, she's a nice option for Diluc. But I, like I said in my short, she might buff his popularity because, you know, bigger number, better number, according to the community. So yeah, she might buff his popularity. But yes, in terms of Team DPS, she's not, I do not think at least right now, she's not going to be an upgrade. Now, if you do not know why people thought Shannon will be a Diluc buff, I do not blame you. There's like three of us that main Diluc, so yes, I will explain to you. So there is a mechanic in the game. It's called Dragon Strike. Cool name, yes. It looks very cool as well, but it's hard to do. It requires you to abuse the game's hit lag and then, you know, do some frame perfect inputs to be able to jump higher than usual and plunge down. Now, it is not really a viable thing for most of the characters because of the restrictions it poses, which I will tell you in a second. But for Dilo, it's a very real thing because not only is his plunge multiplier the highest in the game, but technically Feminine does have higher, but it, it's three levels higher and it's like 2% extra damage. So that's cringe. So anyway, Dilu being a pyro character with infusion on his normal attacks, he can melt and wave those hits, those big juicy plunges for some big juicy damage, you know? Now here comes the restrictions. To do Dragon Sight consistently, you will need to have some sort of movement speed buff, like Animal Resonance. Now this limitation severely limits Diluc's team options when you want to do the Dragon Strike because there's not a lot of synergistic movement speed buffs available. All this to say, Xianu being an animal unit who can wield Virtus and Venerer and enable you to plunge without any input restrictions or team restrictions while also working very well with Forina, allowing Diluc to use her fanfare buff as well, you'd be inclined to think that she is a buff for Diluc, right? Now let's make that clear. Here's the thing, Forina's Hydro is kind of slow. I'm not saying you won't be able to wave all of your hits. You can go test against the gravity boss right now. Diluc will be able to wave all his plunges. However, however, Xianyun's coordinated attack, which does no damage in her burst, but with because of ICD will swear probably every other plunge to my knowledge. It's a, it's a standard ICD, but you're most likely going to use it every other plunge because you know Furin applies Hydro twice every two seconds. So you're gonna wanna have some sort of gap between your plunges. So you do one plunge, it swirl, then you do the other plunge, it does not swirl, and you do the third plunge and it will swirl. So yeah, so yeah that stuff like that. And it does you your aura. Okay? Now I'm not saying that you won't be able to whip all of his hits. Because like I said, Furina on average applies two units of hydro in two seconds. Every two seconds, I mean. Not one unit of hydro every one second. So if you time it properly, and you wait a little bit with your plunges, you should be able to wave all, all of his hits. Well then, where are the cons? This all sounds very good. Why was I making myself look stupid in the shot? Now, I will tell you. First off, imagine if you're not using Furina because you don't have her or you have her on the other side of the abyss. Then I'm sorry to tell you, but this team is very much going to be a side grade, if not a downgrade. To his existing wave teams and yes i am including the og sucro Singcho waves as well plus xianyun does not provide any additional application in his teams like cause or sucros with their bursts do and even with furina first of all if there's more than one enemy then the team is going to feel significantly worse see furina's buff is good it's great right but furina does not have an aoe hydra application it's technically aoe but the AO is pretty small, so unless you are grouping your enemies in, you are not able to apply Hydra on all of them. And here's the thing, Xianyun does not have any form of CC. And when you plunge, you do spread your enemies apart further. You can probably see where I'm getting at with this. Next up, double swording. Now that's very very cringe with her. 
I mean, you can do it, but it's still very cringe. For example, you do Furina's EQ, you do Bennett's QE, and now enemy has a Pyro Aura. Now if you do Xian Yun's N1, you should be able to get a Pyro Swirl. And then you'll just do your EQ to Swirl the Hydro. But I'll let you know that uh, a setup like this is not gonna be very consistent or even doable for that matter on higher ping. You will probably need to charge attack with Freena so that her Saron members can stop attacking the enemy and you can get your Pyro Swirl that way. As I said, Swirling with Xian Yun is kind of scuffed. So my point is that in a single target scenario, she will be a very fine option for Dilu. But as soon as you go into the AoE places with the regular teams, Xianyun will not feel good at all. Another thing to keep in mind is that the fanfare will ramp up to give you damage bonus. You're not going to get it all at once, right? Secondly, you also want to use Diluc's E in between the plunges as well, which will also ape and remove some aura. So you have to play around that as well. And if you don't do Diluc's skill, then both your Bennett and your Diluc are gonna have a hard time with their ER requirements. So point is that all of these small problems kind of stack on top of each other and work against Xi'an Yun in single target, sure. But as soon as you are in multi-target, you have to compete with his existing wave teams. Diluc hits small numbers, yes, but there's a lot of team DPS there to be found. For example, if you take the OG Sucrose in Singcho wave, you get your double swirl, you get your EM and you can possibly pass the TTTS buff to Diluc or Singcho. You can quad wave Singcho's E to unload. Forget the quad wave, even if you get like two waves on his E, you will still be unloading like 200k damage right out the bat. And if you do quad wave, you will be doing 400k plus even half a million if you have a good Singcho, right? So yes, the team DPS, <laughs> it's not even close. And then you have Diluc, who still has full uptime on Bennett's buff for his combo. He still has all the Hydro Aura and the enemy from Singcho's Rain Swords. Singcho has VV, so he's dealing a lot of damage. And Diluc also has Sucrose and Instructor buffs from Bennett. It's not gonna be close at all. Both Diluc and Singcho's E Vape are going to be multi target. Sucrose will give you some form of CC as well. So the team also feels a lot better to play in AoE because you have good coverage. You can also look at uh, the Premier Vape team with Cosmo and Yelan. You're still getting the double soil for Yelan's big damage and Diluc's big damage. And Diluc also benefits from Yelan's ramping up buff as well. You still get full uptime on your buffs and you get to wave Yelan's E as well if you do the setup right. Plus Kazuha gives you a very good amount of crowd control and he will do non-negligible amount of damage as well. Moving on to his melee teams, Xianyun just does not assist you with cryo application at all like Sucrose and Kazuha do. Instead, she will yoink your cry order, so that's pretty good. <laughs> Melt teams are out of the question, yes. Do, do not even try Melt team with Xian Yun, it's not gonna work. Now, in terms of damage comparison, his Melt team versus his Wave team with Xian Yun can be competitive with each other. Now, it all depends upon who your cryo character is for the application, right? If you are using like C6 Kaya with Miss Splitter and you, or you are using like your Ayaka, then obviously the Melt team is gonna outperform heavily. But if you're using the other color options such as Rosaria or a budget-friendly Favonia Skaya low constellation that does not do that much damage, then yes, I can see the Xian Yun wave team being an upgrade, right? But it still does not have as good of an AOE coverage. <laughs> Let's also talk about his Dragon Strike teams. There are a few team variations you can use, but the main one is with Diona, where you use the movement speed buff of her shield. An assistant cryo application using Sucrose or Kazwa's burst so that Diluc can melt his plunges. Usually in that setup, you get like 5 melts. I do not know if it's possible to get 6th one. I haven't been able to. I do not have C2 Super either, so I can't confirm that. I wanted to mention it because if you already don't touch grass, I mean, if you can already do Dragon Strike, then it is by far going to be Diluc's best team as a carry. There is no competition about it. Not only are you melting instead of vaping on those big juicy plunges, but you're also getting a lot of buffs from like C6 Diona and like Instructor on your team. And if you have Elgin, then that's also pretty good. And if you have more vertical instrument like 5 star weapons for your Bennett, for your Sucrose, or a Kazuha, you have C2 Kazuha, you have like Red Horn on your Diluc, then yeah, it also scales pretty well with that. 
So now I have made it clear that Diluc or Batman is not the Messiah, he's not the carry that we were looking for for Xian Yun, right? So then who is? Time to do some gaming TC. Now do not comment that he's pronounced Gaming because I would like to say um no. Just just no. Like have you seen his animations? He stuck through with his name and he came with the RGBs. He is gaming. And I will be gaming with gaming. So he's gaming. Glad we made that clear. Now time to move on. This boy does plunges on his own. He does not need Shandian, but he will very much appreciate her buff. He does have a very slow pyro application, so you can weigh pretty consistently with the Furina slow hydro as well. Probably even in AoE to be honest, because now the swirl from Xianyun's coordinate attack will spread the hydro aura enough and your spyro slow enough that you won't immediately yoink it like you will with Dilu. So yes, it's a pretty good team. Or is it? So in single target, yes, it's a very good team. It's probably going to be ga gaming's best team. But when you move to AoE, you have kind of the similar issues like no VV, you know, good grouping and the plunges, you know, spread the people apart. So like, yeah, all that cringe shit. I, I hate it. So yes, use Kazawa. <laughs> in a similar fashion to Duluke, you can actually play gaming in a melt team. Just pair him up with like Kazwar Sucrose, Bennett and Archeo Cry Applicator, Rosaria, Kaya or something like that, right? And then you will be able to melt his big plunges for big damage. I'm gonna do that personally, sounds pretty fun in my head. It's not, probably not going to be as good as his normal wave team, but I'm gonna do it nonetheless. But let's not divulge too deep into gaming, I mean it's not his video. I mean I can make one if you want. But like it's not his video right now, so yes, let's move on with the Xianyun stuff, right? So basically, gaming is very good with Xianyun, but not the Messi. He's not the Messi either. He's not the carry you are looking for to pair up with Xianyun either. So then who is? Now comes the fun part. I was testing Dilu with Furina against, you know, the gravity boss and it just came to mind that wow this feels pretty good i have to replace uh, shianin with kazuha and do the hydro application i am getting right now it will not feel very good i could not i can't just you know replace the furina out of the equation you will lose all of her vape and i definitely can't replace diluc he's the carry right or can i <laughs> so i present to you plunge Carry Bennett. I would like to call him Laminette. So with Laminette as your carry, you have Pyro Infusion with his C6. So you can vape your shit, right? And he by himself gives enough Pyro to enable both gaming and Diluc to get their Pyro cells. So obviously he can do that for himself as well. But Bennett with Bennett's buff is going to be less damage than gaming with Bennett's buff or Diluc with Bennett's buff, obviously. But here's the thing. You now have an extra party slot. You can put like Yelano Singcho in there for more off field damage, hydro application, and stuff like that. You know, good shit. Or hear me out, let me cook. You can put Kazuha in there. So now you have Kazuha's grouping, you get easy access to double sword, you get Kazuha's buff, you get Kazuha's personal damage as well, which is non negligible. You also get Xianyun's full buff without losing anything. Plus now you can build her with Noblesse or 2-piece attack, 2-piece attack to increase her buff, right? And at any point in time, after your plunges, you know, scatter the enemies, you can switch back to Kazuo and regroup them because Bennett does not have any field time restrictions like gaming does. He can swap out freely whenever he wants. So that's pretty cool. Oh, but wait, I'm not done yet. I still got things to cook. Now, assume that you have an e, a good EM Sands and you have C2 Kazuha or probably good enough artifacts, I guess. Then you can do a hybrid build with Kazuha where you are running EM damage bonus and crit. So now you still have about 400 EM worth of buff for your team, 4 to 500 EM worth of buff. And Kazuha is critting and Kazuha does it pretty hard. So he can also use Xianyun's buff when he does come out to group the enemies, right? And 
hear me out he is going to be benefiting from the bennett buff as well so you can still run him on fabulous without hurting your day yes will this be better than the other options i don't know beta is not over yet so the numbers can change at any point in time to be precise at any monday so i have not done any calculations yet but we'll see even if it is just kind of worse i would still do it cuz it sounds fun to conclude the video i do think shanyun is good in her niche her issue is just that there are not enough characters to take advantage of that niche she is more of a fun unit rather than a strong unit but i do think she does feel kind of iffy without any form of crowd control and her coordinated attack sucks i do not like it at all it has potential to grief your reactions but it does not have any damage potential of it whatsoever i will be testing her on these to be honest i am far more excited for gaming though yeah i will pull on the gaming banner and hopefully snag a shinyun from the rata <laughs> just kidding i will pull on the shinyun banner and hopefully grab some gaming constellations on the way as well if anybody made it till here i really really appreciate you Please like and subscribe for more. See you next time. Cheer on the beat.